Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, we had a really big week at yard sales. In fact, I have so much shit here, I have no idea what to do with it. So let's just dive right into it. Um, I got a huge pile of GameCube games. First one I got was Medal of Honor Rising Sun. Now, I got this a couple weeks ago. I may or may not have included it in one of my pickup videos. But the only reason I picked this up was because it's in pretty good shape, the manual's in there, and because it was bundled with this. This is a Mad Cat's controller that uh, was made for the GameCube. They also made one of a similar design for the PlayStation 2 and the Xbox, and I like to refer to this controller as the only decent thing Mad Cat's has ever done. So, yeah, I have a couple of these. These are actually fantastic. I prefer these to the vanilla GameCube controllers. They just feel great in your hands, and they're fantastic. Uh, pick one of these up if you ever see one. Um, I, I actually like the Xbox one the best. It's got a smaller form factor than the controller S, and it just feels really unique, and uh, yeah, it's a fantastic controller. So is the GameCube one. The PlayStation one's okay. Next, we got, let me just get that out of the way, next, all of these games I got for a buck a piece, so here they come. Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, Tac 2, Staff of Dreams, that's a great series, Spyro, Enter the Dragonfly, Zapper, Pac-Man World 3, Pac-Man vs. and Pac-Man World 2, the Sonic Mega Collection, this has Sonic the Hedgehog, Sonic 2, Sonic 3, Sonic and Knuckles, Sonic 3D Blast, Sonic Spinball, and Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine, all collected on the GameCube. So yeah, that's great. I got Sonic Adventure, Director's Cut. Now this is good because my Dreamcast just so happens to be one of the unfortunate ones that cannot play any of the Sonic Adventure games. You can look more into that. It's a strange phenomenon with uh, early Dreamcasts not being able to play some of Sega's first party exclusives. It's very strange and uh, I like to think that's part of the reason why Sega went out of business. Not for that bug alone, but just because that bug could exist. Uh, next we have Super Monkey Ball, and uh, that's actually the last of my GameCube games. Let me move those out of the way. Okay, next I have a fairly large pile of PS2 games. First we have SOCOM US Navy SEALs. It's kind of crappy, but now I have the box. If you remember a couple weeks back, I got the manual and disc for it, but now I have the box, so that's fantastic. Got Jack and Daxter, Tekken 4, Mortal Kombat Shaolin Monks, Mortal Kombat Deception, Simpsons Road Rage. If you like Crazy Taxi, pick this up. It's just Crazy Taxi with a Simpsons skin. Then I picked up Metal Gear Solid 3 Subsistence. I did not have Subsistence yet. This version of Metal Gear Solid 3 adds a more easily controlled camera, and it is also bundled with um, Metal Gear 1 and 2 for the MSX, or uh, emulated on that. And I also picked up, because I couldn't resist, the Metal Gear Solid Essentials Collection. This is one of the best box sets available on the PS2. It has Metal Gear Solid, Metal Gear Solid 2, and Metal Gear Solid 3. Metal Gear Solid 2 is the Substance Edition, and Metal Gear Solid 3 is the Subsistence Edition. But, as you can see here, in Metal Gear Solid 3 Subsistence, you have Disc 1, Subsistence, and Disc 2, Persistence. Whereas in Metal Gear Solid 3 Subsistence, for the PS2 Essentials Collection, you only have Disc 1. 
and even when it boots up it says disk one subsistence and that is absolutely infuriating. I guess they didn't want to include Metal Gear 1 and 2 in that, but still, it is a beautiful package and includes Metal Gear Solid 1. Of course it is only on PlayStation discs as you can see. They are black discs, PlayStation 1 discs, but it is repackaged and matches the system, or, or matches the uh, rest of the games in the box. And it's just got some wonderful new, I believe that's new art on the cover, so I really like that box set. It's fantastic. So let's move those out of the way. I got a couple. PlayStation 1 games. Here is Crash Bandicoot 2, no manual. Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. Everybody loves the Harry Potter video games. I think that they are some of the better licensed games to ever be made. I like this one a lot. I played this on PC when it first came out, so I'm excited to see how that stacks up to the PlayStation 1 version. And I got this PlayStation Underground promotional set. It comes with two discs, as you can see here, and a manual, which is something you don't see often in PlayStation Underground discs, since this came with a magazine, I believe. And I also got Volume 7 of PlayStation Underground loose with that, which is fun. We've got demos of Tomb Raider 3. NHL Faceoff 99, A Bug's Life, NFL Game Day 99, Apocalypse, that's the one with uh, Bruce Willis, NFL Blitz, Bomberman World, Brave Fencer, Musa Brave Fencer Musashi, and videos of Siphon Filter and Twisted Metal 3. So that's uh, pretty big, and I'm not sure what's on Sampler 7, but maybe we'll check those out one day, that'd be fun do a review of some promotional discs. Next I got The Eleventh Hour, a nice hard case book uh, PC game. It's not big box, but as you can see it's nice. It's got four discs. They've all got some nice macabre art uh, on each of the pages. That's just neat. Yeah, uh, it's uh, the sequel to The Seventh Guest, if you've ever played that. Okay, next we have some Nintendo cartridges. Wayne Gretzky Hockey. Wayne Gretzky's 3D Hockey. I'm actually excited to play that. That came in a bundle that I'm going to show later, but... Hockey. Why not? From my retro shop, I went in and I saw that they had The Adventures of Dino Ricky on the shelf, and I decided why not go on a dino spending spree, and I also bought Dino Wars, and that just happened to be the only dinosaur-based games that they had in the store at the time, so you win some, you lose some, but those are some good games that I did not have yet for my NES. Not particularly rare, but I didn't have them. Next we're going to talk about some miscellaneous hardware that I picked up. Another uh, piece of that bundle with the Wayne Gretzky's hockey uh, was this. Very interesting piece of hardware. This is a rechargeable battery for the original Game Boy. You would plug it in and charge it up and then you'd have a battery on the go. I like to say that the original Game Boy was not a portable video game console but rather a handheld video game console. You could take it places, but it's rather large, and all of the other uh, accessories for it just made it a little bit gratuitous, I think. Um, as you can see, it's got a clip on the back, so you can clip it on your belt for when you're walking around. Just looking like a complete badass pimp with your rechargeable Game Boy. I think that's neat. And also with that bundle, I got this, the Game Enhancer for PlayStation 1. This is basically a Game Shark knockoff from what I've seen. This is literally a Game Shark with a different sticker on it. So, Pirate Game Shark or Game Shark's a pirate of that. I'm not exactly sure. That was around. Game Shark came around uh, 
for the fifth generation, so. In that bundle, I also got this, a link cable for the original Game Boy. So that was a pretty big bundle. And that bundle also happened to contain this. Sega Genesis, as you can see, Sonic the Hedgehog 1 is inside of it. That is the for resale one, not the not for resale one. This is the retail copy. And this Sega Genesis actually works like a charm. It booted up the first time I tried it out. It's a little dirty, but I might actually replace my Genesis with this. I like the design of the original Sega Genesis. This is the high definition graphics version, as you can see right there makes claims that is high definition graphics. And this one I've heard has better sound input. I've had a Model 2 Genesis for years and I might replace that with this one. Just because I like the aesthetic a little bit better and the promise of better sound is something that I don't want to pass up. And the final item in that bundle is this attractive piece of hardware. That is the back of a Sega CD. Now, this is the first generation Sega CD, and as you can see, the Genesis. Let me get this on there. Oh boy. Well, basically, the Genesis attaches to it like this and sits on top like a monstrosity. But, unfortunately, this particular Sega CD does not get power to it, and that is a repair that I am not knowledgeable enough to make, so I'm probably going to throw this up on eBay for uh, non-working for parts, but, you know, you win some, you lose some. It was exciting to just find something that's that cool in the wild, and for so cheap. I only paid 12 bucks for that whole bundle, so... Even without the Sega CD, I think it's well worth it. Um, I also picked this up for two bucks. It's a PlayStation 1 and Piranha Pad. Now, I've never heard of this controller in particular before. But as you can see up here, it is licensed by PlayStation. It is a Sony endorsed product. It has the PlayStation logo on it. But it honestly feels like a Piece. It's very stiff. I don't really like it at all. The D-pad. Very stiff and nasty. But, it came with a memory card. And for $2, that's not really something you can argue with. PlayStation 1. Next thing I got was this. Now this is the green controller S that goes with the Halo Edition Xbox. Now the reason I bought this, I only paid a buck, I think just a dollar for it, is because off camera, a couple weeks ago, I had a time in my life where I just cursed constantly and didn't really do much else because the Xbox that I bought from uh, DI, my local thrift shop, um, it just stopped working. It had the power button malfunction that a lot of Xboxes have. And I just cursed and cursed and hated life for a little while. And then my friend who owns a retro shop gave me a decent deal on a Halo Edition Xbox. So I splurged and paid pretty much retail for it. And But it didn't come with the green controller S. So I'm glad to have finally found that in the wild. And that's my Xbox story for the day. And the last item that I picked up, yeah, this is the last one. Atomic Purple Game Boy. I paid a dollar twenty-five for it, I believe. It comes with Tetris. Tested it out, it's working. It has the battery cover. That never happens in the wild, they're always just missing because kids are little shits. I was a little shit and I lost mine. Um, Atomic Purple Game Boy. So, those are my finds. This was a really big week. I got so much shit, I tried to shake a stick at it and I couldn't figure out how to do that. Um, 
way too much shit this week. This is a long video, and I feel like I've wasted enough of your time, so I'm just gonna say if you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.